I'm Steve Erickson, coming to you this month from the Sun God Arena, home to the North Delta Minor Hockey Association. Now, if you happen to be coming down to this complex or the Sun God Aquatic Center in the next short while, they will be going through major renovation changes. They are in the process of starting the actual formation where these two complexes will be joined to make one solid unit. Nice to see it's finally coming about. This month's program proves once again to be very entertaining, and we have several sports to cover and hope you enjoy the program immensely. On this month's program, we're going to talk about hockey, rugby, wheelchair sports, and basketball. Recently, the Pacific International Junior Hockey League held their annual All-Star Classic at Queen's Park Arena, home for the Queen's Park Pirates. The players were checked by the coaches for both teams attending to participate. Prior to the event, there was a skills competition held, and we talked to Harold Britton about the All-Star Classic and the skills competition. Harold, another year, another All-Star game. You've got the All-Star game this year at Queen's Park. Can you tell, uh, tell us how you come to choose Queen's Park? Well, the, the teams really bid for the All-Star game, although the amount of work that goes into hosting it, you wonder why they do, but Queen's Park, a uh, relatively new team in our league, and uh, it, it alternates between the North Division and the South Division each year, and it, it was North Division this year, and uh, Queen's Park asked if they could host it, and uh, I know the amount of work Bev Kirby's put in, so uh, I think it's going to be uh, an excellent show. Okay, now let's talk about the players. As we watch right now, we see a skills competition going on behind us. So can you tell us, uh, are there separate players, some chosen for the skills competition, others for the game? Now, yes, there is this year. The first time we've done that, uh, some of the skills competitors are uh, all-star games selected also, but some of them are just here because of their skills in, in an area. And uh, again, when uh, Queen's Park came forward and said we'd like to do this I said it's an excellent idea because it includes more or involves more players in the event and uh, I think that's really excellent okay, let's talk about the coaching staff right now uh, who's coaching with Brad Bowen uh, Brad Bowen and uh, Gary Duville from Abbotsford is the assistant coach uh, Rod McLeod from uh, Delta is the trainer on the south team the other team, I uh, believe you've got Peter Crowther? Peter Crowther is the head coach. Uh, Ron Johnson from Queen's Park is the assistant. And our trainers are uh, from Ridge Meadows and uh, Don Grant from Queen's Park. Okay, now, uh, how do the players get chosen to compete uh, and be a player for the, we'll say, for the game? Do the, the, does their own coach select them to be on the all-star team for a player? Or do they basically, as well as, I guess, do they accept the only their own players, but do they put other players involved from other teams? No, we, the, uh, each team nominates a set number of players uh, to be considered for the All-Star, and then the coaches select the All-Star players from that group. Now, in each group, there's perhaps six players nominated that weren't selected, but they're filled in for anyone who's injured or sick. Uh, we then go to the uh, alternate list and uh, bring a player back onto the onto the all-star roster. Now your league is known for uh, as a feeder league somewhat for the BC Hockey League. You lose a lot of players to go up to the parent league. Well, that's true, and some of our coaches take great pride in, in um, selecting players for their team that they can pass on and see go up the line to, uh, to Junior A. So, uh, you know, it's the fact of life that a player might play in our league uh, one year and be ready for Junior A the next year, and we wish them well and send them on their way. Well, this is a big endeavor for uh, never mind, you know, the coaches or the managers and all the players, but all the people behind the scenes that, that, that put this on. Yes, and uh, quite frankly, it's the host team that, uh, that does the work. Uh, I organized two all-star games when I was with the Richmond Sockeyes, and I know, I know how much work's involved and I had a committee of 10 or 12 people. I think they did it, I think Bev Kirby might have done this all by herself. No, she had help, but, she had but help, they're but gonna- There's a lot, a lot of work. There's a lot of work involved, there's no doubt about it. And I think it's, it's I was looking at our all-star game regulations. I think maybe we have to start looking at them to see how we can make it easier on the host team. And I, I think there's ways we can do it. Education is our team, hockey is our game. This combination makes this league unique, their scholarship program and emphasis on player development. 
joined by Delta Ice Hockey coach Brad Bowen. Brad, uh, nice to have you back coaching an all-star game uh, for the PIJHL again. Oh, it's always fun. Uh, I get to meet some of the other guys on the other team and uh, talk to them in a fun atmosphere. So, try uh, to put on a show. Now, from the looks of it, yeah, the, the boys are trying to put on a show. There's a lot of talent out there. Yeah, there is. Um, I mean, you got some young guys out there that are really working hard. You got some old boys just, uh, you know, trying to put on a little bit of a show and have some fun. And uh, we'll get them cranked up here and put on, uh, get a few more goals out here. It's got to showcase, never mind the talent for the Delta Ice Hawks, also the talent uh, that the, you know, the, the PIJHL can produce. Yeah, we've got eight guys on the on the team out here, and uh, but all teams are represented really evenly. And uh, you know, it's fun to watch some of the other guys. You watch them in a tight checking game, and then all of a sudden you see them in a wide open game, and it makes some nice plays and nice passes and uh, on both squads so it's interesting a lot of talent uh, that's being showcased tonight unbelievable talent mm -hmm. and uh, you know the kids are going to start mixing up in this bird I think it's going to be a little bit more intensity a lot of fun out here and everybody's kind of feeling each other out you get kids from different teams playing with each other it's kind of a weird thing and you know so I think they're getting into the mood uh, we should uh, make mention real quick that uh, a lot of kids that you had on your Bantam AAA team that won the Western Canada Championship uh, doing very well very well, very well. A couple of them are up there for the NHL draft this summer. Make so. mention of a couple first time. Uh, well, Brandon Siegel is obviously up for uh, to be drafted. There's uh, Kyle Bruce, I think, is ranked uh, 103rd, 103 on his. I think there's uh, Tyson is a possible, Tyson Mulock is a possible draft pick. Guys are talking about Igor Agarunov for possibly being drafted. You know that Andy Thompson next year is really started to go high in the draft, so the kids are doing really well. And not to say the other kids that are on the team that are playing tier two right now are doing very, very well, and Junior B. Well, it says a lot for the program that uh, that you had that year. Oh, uh, they're talented kids. They coach that sometimes to stand on the bench, but proud of the boys, very proud. Now you're back coaching the Queen's Park Pirates this year on a side note to the All-Star game. Uh, how's everything going with Queen's Park? Very well, R very, very well. There's a very young team. We've got, uh, I think at this point, we've got uh, 14, 17, 16 year olds. And they're playing with a lot of heart and emotion and uh, great kids. Uh, I'm very happy as a coach. You had the luxury last year, uh, luxury pro or con, whatever way you want to put it. Uh, you stepped up, you coached uh, Burnaby Bulldogs for a couple of games. Uh, in, in light of the situation that took place with Darcy Rhoda, how did things work there? Very well. That yeah, was a great experience. Uh, came in and helped out the organization. And fortunately, we got through the playoffs. But a uh, great experience. I loved it. And uh, I'm glad to be back here. The ownership is great. And of course, with my business, it's you know, keeping me busy. But uh, uh, You're I playing out of a place that's got a lot of history around it. Great history. You know, we have a pretty physical young team, and they love this place. A lot does, of characters. Does that go with the building? And, uh, it does. Play? You just walk in here, you can feel it. You can feel it. <laughs> South Delta Men's Recreational Hockey League recently took on the Vancouver Canuck alumni before a sellout crowd at the Ladner Arena. Proceeds for this event go to the BC Hockey Benevolent Society Association as well as the South Delta Minor Hockey Association. And president for the league, Doug Davies, tells us about the undertaking it took to put this prestigious event on. Uh, it's basically a three-year project of mine that I've had in the works. Um, every year, our, our league, the South Delta Recreational Hockey League, um, we try to do a charity game for Delta Assist, and by playing against the Canuck alumni, it's a bigger draw. It's um, sort of a larger format type thing, and it gives us the ability to uh, have an extra recipient and just to make it that much bigger and better. So we brought uh, Delta Minor Hockey on board as a second recipient, and also um, by having the Canuck alumni, they have their BC Hockey Benevolent Society, and they do require a $1,000 appearance fee, and that sort of uh, makes sure that there's a commitment uh, from the people and what to come here. So it's a lot of work, and all the teams within our league, we have an eight-team league, they've, everybody's been on board this year. Uh, we talked about it last year, but last year was kind of full 100% commitment. We didn't really want to push through. This year we've got the commitment. We've had uh, great work from the team, for everybody to sell their tickets and promotions and whatnot, and I think uh, the stands show the results. Yeah, how many people are, do you think are here tonight? Uh, apparently the capacity here is about a thousand, so uh, we're probably just under that. Well, it's pretty close. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, each team is. This is the Delta Minor Hockey here playing the mini game. Um, so next year we have a um, paper airplane throw. We've got various prizes, and uh, it's also um, uh, an autograph Canuck jersey. And there will be a post-game autograph session for the Canuck for the alumni team after the game as well. How, how do the uh, South Up uh, senior uh, men's uh, guys take this? Are they having lots of fun, these guys? Oh, I think so, for sure, yeah. Everybody, you know, it's, it's fun to be able to come here. It's fun for both sides. It's kind of a thing where you want to play kind of half 
there is no one here to try to get it yet. And what these guys are, you know, what they lose in a little bit of speed, they, they still have with their shot and their smart support and their passing in the game. So we're taking a good game, but it's all about fun too. As Craig Sherbity found out with scoring the first goal against the now, what happened with that tie? What happened there? Well, it's a time honored tradition that the first guy that scores the goal against them uh, gets a photo opportunity and then unfortunately gets a tie in the face as well at the same time. Yeah. So it looks like it's a pretty uh, passing ball and fun night tonight. It should be, yeah. We're hoping to raise, uh, well, we're, we're, we're committed to at least, um, you know, $750 uh, per, per, um, per group for minor hockey and for uh, the Delta Sports. Plus whatever we can do through, um, you know, we have the beer garden. And 50-50 draw, so we're going to be taking uh, part proceeds from all that as well, and also contributing as well. So it's an opportunity uh, to, to give you know, much needed funds. The Canucks alumni team is a model team with players such as Richard Berger, Garth Butcher, Chris Oglison, Darcy Rhoda, and Yuri Bubla on board. This alumni squad is very entertaining and competitive. Two coaches for the Canuck alumni, Norm Jewison and Dave Duke, tell us about this great group of players. It's a chance for them to uh, relive their camaraderie. You know, they, they, they always lose that after they get out of uh, pro hockey. The camaraderie is such a big part of it. Uh, they practice every Wednesday night together. And uh, it's just a great get-together for these guys who have jobs in uh, all walks of life like everybody else now, you know, that we work nine to five like everybody else, so. Dave, how many alumni do we have? Oh, I'd probably say today we have about 45 fellas, eh? But uh, we need that many nowadays. To, you know, there's commitments with some fellas coaching their kids. And no, then, not all of them are here. Oh, the, no, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, a lot of them have to work and have commitments elsewhere. So it's good to have an alumni that big now. How many events a year do you guys uh, play in? Oh, I imagine we somewhere around 12, 13 games a year now, yeah. all over the all over the province. Yeah. And most of them for charity. Uh, How does the Canuck alumni compare to other NHL teams alumni? Well, I think it's best explained this way. And Brian Burke, you know, the uh, alumni or the uh, general manager and president of the Canucks, used to work at the National Hockey League. And uh, when he worked there, he always told other teams, if there's a, if you're trying to set up an alumni, try and pattern it after the Vancouver Canucks, because he always maintained that ours was the best in the, the best in the National Hockey League, which, you know, and it's gone on for an awful long time, eh, Dave? Like 1953, uh, even before the Canucks came into the league, when they were in the Western League, they had an alumni, and it was uh, very, very active in the community, you know, almost 50 years now. The face of John Oliver Park will be changing soon with the addition of two rugby fields. Delta's Millennium Committee and Delta Parks and Rec have entered into an agreement with the ex-Britannia Red Lions Athletic Association to develop the two rugby fields and to revitalize the old historic golf barn at John Oliver Park in North Delta. The ex-Brits are expected to pay over $1 million into the project. Over 250 people attended the celebration and groundbreaking of this new project. Uh, this is a partnership of Delta Millennium Committee, the Britannia Lions Rugby Club and the Municipality of Delta. This is an ambitious undertaking especially for the Millennium Committee and the Britannia Lions because they are committing to a lot of hard work in the future to achieve the collective vision for John Oliver Park. It's, it's long been a dream of ours or a hope of ours to, to have a facility, a, a clubhouse changing facility adjacent to a rugby pitch. It's, it's not really something that's often possible. There's very few clubs in the in BC that have that. And so we're this part of the reason why we started looking for something like this. We have a lot of members who live out this way now and they were driving into town to practice and going, why am I doing this? Why can't we get something out here? Um, so that was part of another part of why we started looking in this direction. And uh, it just seems that the ball got rolling and then it keeps going with us. and. Uh, we're really, really thrilled about the whole, the whole idea. Well, I think uh, one of the big things that we were hoping is we could come up with a project that would incorporate all three communities of Delta, so that the South Delta folks, as well as the North Delta and the East Delta folks, would feel that they had a part in this. 
So we were really uh, happy when the opportunity to do something with John Oliver Park came about, because it is truly in the center of Delta, accessible to all communities of Delta, and uh, is available for everyone to take advantage of. So we were really excited about that opportunity. This has been a long time coming, I know from the, the time wow, we were first yes. approached. Yes. Um, there was a time when we weren't sure where we were going to go next, once we uh, got our a letter from the federal government rejecting our proposal, which we had spent hundreds of hours putting together, and the uh, municipal uh, folks, David Kalinovich and David Gibbon, had spent hours and hours putting that project together. It was a wonderfully well done, thought out project, and we really were devastated when we got our rejection from the federal government that we got zero funds. So it was at that point that the rugby club said no, that was okay, that they were willing to still go ahead with the project and uh, they would do extra fundraising and for, to enable it to come to fruition. And then we decided we would sell trees and try and raise some funds that way, as well as memorial uh, benches for the park area and a few other, uh, other opportunities. So we thought, well, there's enough enthusiasm here with the folks that are here to make this a go, and so here we are. When the Millennium Committee was looking for a major project, uh, they came up with the concept of a Millennium Forest that they wanted to undertake. And um, we married uh, the proposal by the uh, Britannia Rugby Club to uh, come to John Oliver Park with both concepts. The Rugby Club wanted to build a, a new uh, rugby field as well as uh, establish a home for rugby in Delta. And so. Uh, we got the two groups together and they became very excited because the objectives of both uh, organizations were very, very compatible with achieving a Millennium Forest and a rugby home here in Delta at John Oliver. What do you, what do you foresee happening um, with the barn itself? Are you, is it going to stay in the same position or are you going to have to make changes? We may have to make some changes because uh, my understanding is that the foundation needs to be rebuilt and so one of the suggestions is that we build a new foundation rather than try and build a foundation underneath the barn is to build a, a new foundation move the barn slightly onto the new foundation and then we have a better structure to, to, to build or to rebuild the, the existing structure so you know i hope one day it will become the north delta uh, britannia lions rugby club but uh, we'll see but we're also proud of the, the unique uh, partnership with the delta millennium committee the Britannia Rugby Club and, the co of course, the Corporation of Delta. Who knows? One day you may be hosting Wales, the Springboks, or the All Blacks. Hey, you guys, this could be the Twickenham of the Fraser Valley. Congratulations <laughs> to you all. Delta Parks and Recreation, in partnership with BC Wheelchair Sports Association, held a have-a-go day at the Delta Senior Secondary Gym. This is part of BC Wheelchair Sports Bridging the Gap program. The aim of this program is to help individuals with disabilities become reintegrated into the community and regain their motivation, inspiration, independence, and confidence through physical activity. Bridging the Gap provides the opportunity for individuals with disabilities using manual and electric wheelchairs to get physically alive. It's called a Have a Go Day, and it's part of a project called Bridging the Gap, run by BC Wheelchair Sports Association. What type of things are happening today? What we're doing is we're demonstrating a whole range of sports that wheelchair sports have to offer, such as wheelchair tennis, wheelchair basketball. At the moment, the guys are playing quad rugby, and we're going to be doing some floor hockey later on, and we've been talking about athletics and power soccer. They're, they're mainly local Delta people, because that's why we've teamed up with Kathy and um, Delta Parks and Records to try and get people here in the community out to have a go at different sports and see what we have to offer. One of the great things about the project is that once a month we're in the from Rehab Centre and we're meeting unions of guys like Hillary was sort of um, all that time ago. And these are people that right now they maybe don't know that they're going to be able to do different physical activities once they get home and we meet them when they're in the rehab centre and then once they've gone back into the community like they're here back in Ladna and it's been a you know six months a year since they were in the rehab and they maybe don't know how to get started and the great thing is, is that we're here today and those guys 
who are back in the community can come. And DS Strong have actually brought a group here today and they're still in patients at the moment, but it's just bringing them into the community as a sort of taster of what's going to be there for them when they get home. Bridging the gap provides the opportunity for individuals with to get physically active. Have a Go Days are held regularly, giving people the opportunity to come and try a variety of wheelchair sports in a fun and informal atmosphere. Wheelchair athletes demonstrate the sports and everyone gets to participate. Some of the sports include power soccer, basketball, rugby, and hockey. By participating in these activities, one can overcome their fears and gain a new self-confidence. Contact Delta Parks and Recreation for more details. High-flying Siakam Seahawks senior boys basketball team recently took on Tamanawas in a very entertaining game. This was a game between the two top division teams in the South Zone AAA division. Head coach Rick Gill tells us about the team. No easy baskets. They're getting easy baskets. If they're going to score, we got to make them work for it. Okay? They're getting them too easy. Let's go. Rick, got a big game up uh, tonight against Tamawis. Uh, they're coming on very strong now. Yeah, they got a really good team. Saw them play on uh, Tuesday against Earl Marriott, and they did a really good job, and they actually beat them by three, so they got a good team. Okay, now, going into tonight's game, we got a healthy team? <laughs> no, I wish we had a healthy team. We got a few guys sick and some injuries, so it's going to be tough. Is there a lot of rivalry between the schools, between yourself and Tamanawis and some of the other schools you play against? Um, Tamanawis? Not really yet. Uh, Delta schools? Yeah, North Delta, South Delta, there's a rivalry. Big time against North Delta, obviously. You know, uh, last time we were here, you had a, a strong game, uh, which was always entertaining to do, but uh, several of the players that uh, we like to watch for on the team, uh, Oram Ackle is the one that uh, comes to mind, just plays uh, exceptional all the time. Yeah, he's a really good player. Our best player, obviously. Our go-to guy. And but we, have, we got other guys that we rely on. We have to have five guys on our team contributing for us to win so it's not just one guy that's going to win or lose the game for us team game yeah team game he's our best player but if other guys don't step up and do what they have to do we're not going to win we're going to take a look at the standings right now as we mentioned from the outset of the broadcast Siakam currently first uh, they played six games one five lost one ten points South Delta second place four games played so they've uh, got a couple of games in hand there they've won four they've got eight points North Delta third place played five games Games, one four last one eight points Kamanowicz is currently in fourth only played two games so boy do they ever have a lot of games in hand they've got four that they've uh, got to work on right now they've won both of their games this is their other one that they're working on and that's what uh, the coaching staff said he'd love to work on but the rounding it out right there you can see ball couldn't get control of it two has it two back to Oramaco Oramaco with control sets it up looks dry taking that one 79 79 right now we're tied a piece it's the only second time of the game that they've been tied can drives for the hoop lazy layup once again long pass straight down the court can wide open oh good move and what solid defensive play by omar ganif on that play to steal him and trip him on the ball back inside nice play kenny ku had a good chance but man what solid back checking on that play by omar ganif Siakam, the inbound the ball, 79-79, we've got 47 seconds left, it's do or die, far side, pass it back, don't forget, Siakam in first place right now, Orlando drives, gets the hoop and gets her down, oh baby, he's come to play, I said that earlier on, if he's going to pick an off a notch or two, he's got to do it now, he did just that, put it in overdrive and he did exactly that, timeout called to Manowitz, Siakam comes to life, 81-79 with 42 seconds left in the game. We're going to sneak over and go on one of the benches right now. Not sure which one we're going to go on. We got the lead. All right. Now. Let's go to the guild. Okay. The get, if they score, we'll call the timeout. Okay. If they score to tie it. If they score and we're up three and they score a two and we're up only one, we just bring it in bounds. Okay. Second one, 86-79. Well, I tell you, they come to life. This shows why they're in first place. Going up, did he get it? No. Don't take a foul on that one. Anico has control. Going to try the long desperation bomb. No. Control of the ball, and now has it to steal. They come back and they defeat them with a score of 86 to 79. 
and Kamanowicz only scored 19 in the fourth quarter. Kamanowicz's let down was in the third quarter when they only took seven points. Going after a well-deserved rest, Coach Rick Gill. Uh, Rick, is it fair to say, fair assessment, say you guys get lucky at the end? Um, I don't know if it was lucky, but we got some breaks, and um, it's, you can call it luck or taking advantage of your breaks, whatever you want to call it. I call it taking advantage of our breaks. So uh, You played strong. You played uh, strong. You had a chance uh, a few times to give the ball away. Uh, Oramaco, uh, he seemed like tonight he was uh, laboring somewhat when he was making the bad the passes. I won't say bad passes. They were, they were sort of like uh, lax passes behind the play? Yeah, he was, he was doing that a little bit, but he's, he's suffering from a cold, so he's not 100%, as you can probably tell out there. He wasn't playing his to his full potential, he still played a really good game. Played a good game. It's uh, it's not what we're used to seeing the uh, you know uh, the aforementioned John or Mac or the way he normally steps it up a notch or two. But uh, even uh, the rest of the players, they all played very well. You played strong defensively. I'm having a hard time getting rebounds. Yeah, we we're especially in the first half. We weren't blocking out, but in the second half, we picked up our defense and we started helping out on defense. And then we got good position so we could get the rebounds. And I think they got a little bit frustrated and they stopped going to the boards like they were in the first half. So that helped us out. The turning point uh, had to be the third quarter. You got 18 points, they only got seven. You seemed to just shut down their offense. Yeah, that was the key. That's what I was telling the guys the whole game was defense, defense, defense. And second half, we played some defense. I think they scored 26 points in the second half. They had 53 in the first half. So that's a big difference. That's all for this month's program from, once again, the Sun God Arena, home for the North Delta Minor Hockey Association. In the Did You Know category, did you know that the new speaker for the House of Commons in Ottawa is Bob Kilger? Bob Kilger is a past referee in the National Hockey League, has a son playing for the Montreal Canadian, Chad Kilger. Vancouver Giants in the Western Hockey League start official play this coming September. They are looking for billets in the Ladner or Tawasson area. Anyone that can assist them in this area, please call 878-8597 and leave a message and they will return your phone call. Kennedy Surrey Baseball Association are currently accepting registrations. Anyone interested, please phone Cindy at 594-5924 or you can send her an email at ksba at look.ca. Well, that's all for this month's program. Hope you've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun bringing it to you. On behalf of Kevin Adlin and myself, thanks for watching. Remember, community sports for a sporting community.